So I have a couple of songs that I thought I would teach you. Um, and sometimes I use my loop station, but not today. Don't want to anger the technology guys. So just going to teach you this uh, song by Allie Helpert. Maybe some of you have, have learned. Um, uh, it goes like this. Loosen, loosen, baby. Repeat that. Because I think. Second breath. You don't have to carry. Muscles and bones, the weight of the world in your muscles and bones. Let go, let go, let go. Let go, let go, let go. Let's two lines at a time. Loosen, loosen, baby. You don't have to carry. The, of the, the choir knows it. Follow along as you can. Let go, let go, let go. Any harmonies? Loosen, loosen, baby. You don't have to carry the weight of the world. Your muscles and bones. for me, the bases and tenors. Let go, let go. Ah, one more time. Loosen, loosen, baby. You don't have to carry the weight of the world in your muscles and bones. Let go, let go, let go. You know the other part? Holy breath and holy name, will you ease, will you ease this pain? Let's do it line by line. Holy breath and holy name. Repeat that. Holy breath and holy name. Will you ease, will you ease this pain? And we're just going to move everything up a little bit for the Sopranos and Elsas. Um, loosen, loosen, baby. You don't have to carry the weight of the world in your muscles and bones. Let go, let go, let go again. Holy breath and hold. Quickly. Um, so the chorus goes like this Sing, sing, sing. That's the first part. Sing, sing, sing. sing. Second line. Sing, sing, sing. Sing, sing, sing. That's like the first part. Sing, sing, sing. I'll sing all the way through. Respond with that chorus. 
When my heart is breaking and the world is aching, when I'm mad or blue, when all I know are hurting, when nothing is working, I've found this thing I can do. I sing, 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 just sing, sing, sing. I sing, 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 I sing the way through. Can you find some harmony? Sing, 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 I'll sing, sing, sing. I'll sing away through my turn when my heart is aching and the world is breaking when I'm mad or blue when all I know are hurting and nothing is working I've found a thing we can do we'll sing 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 just sing, sing, sing. We'll sing, sing, sing. We're going to beat this. I'll sing away through for me and for you. I'll sing away through when my heart hurts. Sing away through until the world works. Sing away through when my heart aches. Sing away through as the world breaks. Sing away through for me and for you. We'll sing away. Yes, we will. Yes, we will. Yes, we will. Through. Oh, thank you for singing with me this morning. Give yourselves a hand. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Cecilia Dodge, she, her, and I'm a member of our board of directors. Welcome to White Bear Unitarian Universalist Church. We're a community of youth, adults, and children of many diverse theologies held together by covenant, not creed. Together, we share the values of courage, reverence, and compassion. May you know deep welcome and belonging in this place. We encourage that welcome by asking everyone to wear a name tag. And now, another way to be welcomed is to take a moment to say hello to each other.
to share a request for today's meditation, please place it in the chat box before the opening hymn or add it to the meditation bowl. Please gain consent before you use someone's full name. The meditation bowl is in the Soul Work Center, along with some activities to help people of all ages engage with today's service. Today, we welcome Sarah M. Greer as our guest vocalist. Sarah is a jazz vocalist, Im improviser, and instructor living and singing in the Twin Cities, who uses spontaneous singing to create communities and connect individuals on local and inter international stages. Sarah is passionate, some might say evangelical, about everyone, every person's right to sing and the power of singing to change the world. Welcome, we're so glad to have you with us today. And welcome visitors, we're glad you are here. If you're interested in learning more about our church community, please attend our membership one class today from 12.30 to two. Snacks and childcare will be provided. Whether or not you're interested or ready to become an official member of our church, this two-part series answers a lot of questions about our church, our faith, our history, and ways to get involved and engaged. Welcome visitors, we're glad you're here. This Wednesday, you're invited to join us for supper and our WBUUC version of the Moth Radio Hour. Come prepared to tell a five minute story about how love shows up in your life. All are welcome. Do you use in-ear in hearing devices? Did you know that for many of those devices, you can connect to WBUUC's hearing loop, providing you amplified sound during church gatherings? If you do not know how to connect to the system, connect your personal hearing assistance device into the hearing loop system, or just want a refresher, we would like to extend an invitation to you to be trained how to do so with a representative from the company Midwest Hearing Loops that installed our system. Please join us either next Sunday, January 21st at 1230 or Thursday, January 25th at 11 a.m. in the sanctuary. So ends our announcements. Welcome to our church. Together we grow our souls and serve the world in love.
You gotta put one foot in front of the other. My name is Reverend Jessica Clay, and my pronouns are she, her. And thank you to all of you who have maybe sat in the same seat for 10 years, and that might be over here, <laughs> and who might be sitting with what it means to change seats this morning. Thank you for embracing trying things out together. The choir is not staying here permanently. They might. We're just trying things out together. So thank you, choir, and thank you to all of you who can still achieve your view by just moving over a little bit, or you're still welcome to sit in the um, back row. So thank you for that. And I just have a little daycare cold, which is why I'm going to remain masked today. Our call to worship this morning is from the Reverend Gretchen Haley, and it is titled, Know Only That You Are Loved. And I invite you, if you have something in your hands or maybe you're a little preoccupied with something, to just kind of settle in to receive these words. For this one moment, know only that you are loved, that you are safe and whole and loved. Know that you belong here, here among us, here upon this earth, in your body, however tired or broken your heart may be. Whatever fear, disappointment, anger you carry, for this hour, know you are not alone. Feel the presence of others surrounding you, breathing beside you and with you and with us on Zoom, discovering together the way our voices rise and fall together in harmony and hope. Claim here a resilient freedom, the choice for love, for light, to live with joy and gratitude and praise as a form of resistance. Already we are organizing. Come, let us worship together. I'm Jerry Yans, and my pronouns are he, him. I grew up with three siblings in a typical, quiet, Midwestern home. Family life was pretty easy. No drama, no big issues, no major crises. Very little in the way of disagreement. This tranquil childhood left me without the skills or the inclination to challenge people I don't agree with. To this day, I'm not good at disagreeing with people, but I keep trying. In 1987, I was invited to join a men's group formed by six guys at the church I was attending at the time. I started meeting with them every other Saturday from 7 to 9 a.m. Didn't know quite what to expect at that point. 
I discovered that the group's agenda did not include typical topics like politics, sports, and golf scores. It dealt with important life issues, personal stuff, family stuff, the roles of fathers and husbands, frustrating jobs and favorite pastimes, the good times and the bad, successes and failures, joy and pain. The most important discussions were personal and challenging. I began sharing some important personal stories with the group. Early on, some of the challenges I received in response were, shall we say, outside of my comfort zone. One such discussion was about my departure from the faculty at the University of Minnesota to take a position as director of audiology at a local ENT clinic. This was a very emotional move that had a huge impact on my life. Another was when I went through a difficult divorce after 20 years of marriage. That change had an even bigger impact. The group also questioned me when my wife Marcia and I were coming together in our new relationship. I had good answers for them, and 31 years later, Marcia and I are still going strong. In these discussions, the guys challenged my attitudes, decisions, and actions. At first, my reaction was to bristle at their audacity to challenge me on such personal topics. I soon realized that these challenges forced me to re-examine issues and actions, and ultimately led me to a better understanding of myself and others. And the challenges were offered with love. Over the years, all of the men in the group have had their turns to be on the hot seat to hash out difficult issues. We listen, we laugh, we argue, but we find loving relationship through those arguments. We know that in times of crisis, we could pick up the phone at any time of day or night and call a member of this group and they'd be willing to talk. 37 years later, I'm still meeting with these same guys every other Saturday morning from seven to nine. This is the most disagreeable, loving group of men I've ever known. <laughs> so as we light the chalice today, I invite you to think about the times when conflict can be an opportunity to practice accountability and to move toward the liberating love that we all seek. I'm Reverend Jack, and my pronouns are he, him. Please join me for the opening words. Love is the spirit of this church, and service is its law. This is our great covenant, to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love, and to help one another. Our opening hymn is Circle Round for, for Freedom, led by Sarah. Please rise and body your spirit.
My name is Nico, my pronouns are they, them, and this is my last day as the Assistant Director of Religious Education for this congregation. <laughs> I thought maybe I could get through 11 a.m. without crying, but I don't think so now. So <laughs> <clears throat> for today's story, I brought with me my belief box, which contains all of the things that I believe. Everyone has a box kind of like mine, whether physical or imaginary, with a bunch of different things that we have come to believe inside it. A belief box is really special and must be carried carefully. So for a moment, put your hands out in front of you and imagine what it is like to carry all of your precious beliefs in your hands. This takes practice. At the end of the service today, the kids and youth are gonna come back into the sanctuary practicing holding their belief boxes and you all are invited to practice that again, following their example. I first came to this congregation as a seventh grader with a belief box full of things that I got from my parents, my friends, and the Catholic church my family used to go to. As a teenager, I went through the coming of age program here where I spent my Sundays exploring UU theology and beginning to articulate my own beliefs alongside my peers. That is where I first went through my belief box and thought about which of the beliefs I wanted to hold on to which I needed to let go of, and what new beliefs I might want to add. And that's something I've been doing consistently ever since. Sometimes it's really easy to tell what needs to be taken out, like when I stuck my hand in my belief box one day and pulled out this prickly, pokey ball that was my belief that my worth comes only from what I produce or accomplish. Or when I sat down next to my friend and one of the beliefs in my box hurt her, and I realized that what I believe about the world can hurt the people I care about. So I decided that when my beliefs hurt me or the people around me, they need to go. And on the other hand, some of my beliefs are so important to me that I can't imagine letting go of them. For a long time, I have carried around this chalice that represents my commitment to justice and the beloved community. This heart drawing that was done by a kid here that represents the centrality of love this little animal friend that reminds me of the interdependence of all things in the universe. And these beliefs feel like friends to me. They are very much at home in my belief box. And there are things in my belief box that were added because of this congregation. I have in here a mind jar, which reminds me of the beauty and energy of multi-generational community. I have a paper chain that represents the covenants that we aspire to meet, which sees us through the hard times. And I have a storybook for the ways that stories connect and guide our spiritual lives. It is because of you all that these beliefs are in here, and I am so very grateful. The people we are in relationship with are carried with us in our belief boxes. And so, the last thing in my belief box this morning is this string, with the end of which is tied to this community. The other end is coming with me because my love for this spiritual home will always be with me wherever I go. And as I come to the end of this morning's story, I want to share a little bit about where I'm heading. So when you think of the string that connects us, you know where my end of it is. I'll be taking a year away from this church, as is recommended to give both me and the congregation time to adjust to new roles and people. But this is not goodbye forever. I'll be back in a few months to celebrate Jessica's installation with you all, and someday I'll return to ask to be ordained by this congregation. And if you are a BIPOC youth or young adult in this congregation, I hope you'll stay in touch with me in my new role as a UUA contact and resource for UU BIPOC youth and young adults. And I hope we'll all cross paths at UUA events as you deepen your connection to our faith's national organization. So to this congregation that has shaped me as a person and a UU and helped me add to and hold my belief box with care, I thank you and I love you.
My name is Amy, my pronouns are she, her, and I'd like to invite our children forward this morning as we send Nico on their way. So if you'd like to come join us and come sit in sort of a half circle right up front here. And if you're questioning whether or not you fit under the umbrella of children, yes. The answer is yes, come on forward. So it is often our work here at church to hold space for naming transitions and rites of passage. And this morning we have the bittersweet job of holding space to name that Nico, our beloved assistant director of religious education, is moving on from their work here at WBUUC and onto a new role at the UUA. Nico, your role here has shifted and grown over the past 12 years, and in that time we have all shifted and grown alongside each other. I am forever grateful for the ways that holding our belief boxes together has helped to shape my own beliefs, the beliefs of our children, youth, and adults here, and our programming. While your ministry takes you away from your work here at WBUUC, your impact here is everlasting. We hold the gifts of your time, love, and wisdom with deep gratitude. Congregation, the tender work of leave taking is work not just for the person leaving, but, for, but also for all of us who say goodbye. Though we know that this is not a forever goodbye, it is now our work to send Nico on their new journey with our love and blessings. After the service, we hope you will join us for a reception in Nico's honor in the social hall. There will be cake. Who doesn't love cake? <laughs> Saw some heads perk up down here at the cake. And a couple of tables where you can create blessings for Nico to take with them on their journey. Nico, may the blessings of this congregation continue to anchor and guide your work wherever your ministry calls you. And when you feel the time is right, we hope you find a warm welcome and space here to be held, not as a staff member, but as a beloved part of this community. Nico, it's with joy and sadness that we now release you from your duties as assistant as Assistant Director of Religious Education here at WBUUC. Congregation, I'm gonna ask you a question and if you agree, re, uh, reply with, we do. Congregation, do you, with love and care, release Nico from their duties as Assistant DRE and send them on their way with blessings? We, we do. do. Nico. Do you, with love and care, set down your duties as assistant DRE, knowing that the congregation sends you with our blessing for your journey ahead? Nico, as a symbol of our gratitude, we give this chalice to you, a replica of the chalice that we light every Sunday, created by Kate Christopher and given on behalf of the congregation. The string will always keep us connected, and we hope that this chalice Chalice serves as a reminder of this faith home. Blessings on your journey. So this morning, our children and youth are going to be sung on their way by all of you. Uh, Go Lift It Up, number 1057 in our teal hymnal. And we and Nico are going to go together. We're going to build some belief boxes. We will return in at the end with our belief boxes together.
I invite you to settle in for a time of prayer and meditation. Feel the ground beneath your feet. If you have something in your hands, I invite you to set it down and tune into your breath. If you are watching online and doing something, I invite you to find a moment of stillness. With 43 households online and about 110 people in the room, we gather in community in this moment to lift up our collected prayers. After the prayer this morning, there will be a minute or two of silence, followed by singing hymn number 123 in the gray hymnal, Spirit of Life, and we will sing that seated. God, great mystery that connects us in this space, one who goes by many names. We lift up our prayers this morning. We lift up the hearts in this room that are in need of comfort. We lift up the people we are connected to that are in need of comfort on this day, that are in need of care and warmth. We lift up members of this community. We lift up Karen for Karen's continued healing. We lift up Samantha Clemente's husband who is on tour. May he be safe and successful bringing his art to the world. You're now invited to name someone you would like to bring into this space of prayer. Holy One, we lift up these names that are uttered from our lips that rest on our hearts. We lift up that it may be ourselves in need of prayer. We lift up those whose hearts are broken, those who are struggling with mental illness, with addiction, those who are struggling with disease diagnoses. We lift up those we are connected to who are struggling with economic insecurity, those who live in our nation under our system, which is built on white supremacy, those who have marginalized identities. We lift up all of these people with care. We pray that for this hour together, our spirits may be energized for the work ahead. We pray that we will continue to work for a liberatory love. We pray that we will, with a gentle examination, look in our belief boxes or allow others to point out to us what is in there without taking it personally and let go of that which no longer serves us let go of that which does not lead to liberation. On this cold, wintry morning, we also lift up that today marks 100 days since Hamas first attacked Israel. And we lift up that this war did not begin on that day, that this war, 
this fighting, this struggling to survive has happened for a long time now. We lift up all of the lives lost. We lift up the people that are struggling to survive, that do not have access to basic human rights, to basic health care. We pray for peace. We pray that we may work towards a world which has peace in it, in our hearts, in this nation, that we may continue to call our legislators and call for peace. That we may continue to speak up when harm happens. And lastly, on this morning, we pray for joy. We pray because we know that broken hearts can also leave space for joy because we know that some people came on this morning with joy on their lips and we want them to know that that joy is welcome here. That joy is celebrated and can be shared here. We pray that even in the midst of hard times, joy may make its way to us and we may be ready to receive it. For all of these things we pray, amen. Today's special collection will go to the Black Student Union at White Bear Lake Area Schools. The collection will help defray costs for a group of students who are high school juniors and seniors who will participate in a tour of historically Black colleges and universities. Some of these students will take part in a local Martin Luther King Day event on January 15th at Parkview UCC Church. 
The goal of the college tour is to support these students to see themselves as future leaders within our communities. Thank you for your generous contribution to help local youth become leaders. You can text to give, place cash or check in the offertory basket, or give on our website. However you choose to give, thank you for your generosity and your faith in this life we live together. fall like water, let our prayers fall like tears, fall from our lips to settle like leaves. Let our prayers find their way into the closed heart, wounded, scarred, in need of mending and care. Let our prayers Move the muscles in our bodies to shift the obstacles in our paths. Let our prayers move like water. Water. Let our prayers move through the wind and on the breeze further than expected, imagined, or dreamed. Let our prayers move like let our prayers pound like the blood in a beating heart pound like the blood in a beating heart pound like the blood in our beating hearts insistent and life giving let our prayers fall like water Let our prayers move within and without churches, mosques, temples, synagogues, places of worship, in babbling brook and bird song, from the highest highs and the valleys low, in the glaciers and the oceans and the waves and the wilds, let our prayers move like water. Let our prayers do the work we are not yet willing, not yet sure, not yet able to do. The work we are not yet sure, not yet able, not yet willing to do. Let our prayers move like water. Let our prayers move like breath. Like breath. Like fire. Let our prayers move like a revolution, a revelation, an evolution, an elevation. Let our prayers move like water, like breath and fire, cracking open seeds we need for growth and change. Let our prayers, your prayers, my prayers move like Let our prayers find their way into the hurting hearts on the other side of the world. Let our prayers move like water. Prayers in and out of time. Prayers for all time. Prayers like water. For those hurting and afraid, for those hurting and afraid, 
clears thy water. Let our prayers move like water. Let our prayers move like tears. Fall from our lips and settle like leaves. Ashe, amen. So it is, so be it. Our first reading today is from the Reverend Martin, Duke, Martin Luther King Jr.'s sermon delivered at the National Cathedral on March 31, 1968. We've kept the original language, realizing that some terms are outdated in, in regard to gender. We are challenged to develop a world perspective no individual can live alone, no nation can live alone. And anyone who feels that he can live alone is sleeping through a revolution. The world in which we lives, live is geographically one. The challenge that we face today is to make it one in terms of brotherhood. Now, it is true that the geographical oneness of this age has come into being to a large extent through modern man's scientific ingenuity. Modern man, through his scientific genius, has been able to dwarf distance and place time in chains. And our jet planes have compressed into minutes distances that one took, once took weeks and even months. All of this tells us that our world is a neighborhood. Through our scientific and technological genius, we have made of this world a neighborhood, and yet we have not had the ethical commitment to make it a brotherhood. But somehow, in some way, we've got to do this. We must all learn to live together as brothers, or we will all perish together as fools. We are tied together in a single garment of destiny, caught in an inescapable network of mutuality. And whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. For some strange reason, I can never be what I ought to be until you are what you ought to be. And you can never be what you ought to be until I am who I ought to be. This is the way God's universe is made. This is the way it is structured. Our second reading is a quote from the Reverend Angel Kyoto Williams. The way that I think of love most often these days is that love is space. It is developing our own capacity for spaciousness within ourselves to allow others to be as they are. That is love. And that doesn't mean we don't have hopes or wishes that things are changed or shifted, but that to come from a place of love is to be in acceptance of what is, even in the face of moving it towards something.
Thank you. As we heard in our second reading today, Reverend Angel Kyoto Williams says that love is allowing others to be who they are. This is our invitation in covenantal community. We are not bound together by shared creed. We are bound together by covenant. The promises that we make to each other about how we will be with each other and about our responsibility to our planet and to humanity. For many of us, the closest Unitarian Universalists get to a creed is our seven principles. And these are found in the front of your gray hymnal. These say what we are for in the world. Last year at your annual meeting, you as a congregation adopted the eighth principle, which means a commitment to dismantle oppression and racism within yourselves and the ways that you do church. As Reverend Jack and I have preached about, the UU principles are under a multiple year process of revision and the proposed changes are to move from these principles to values. This will be voted on at General Assembly this summer. Values such as love, justice, interdependence, equity, transformation, generosity, and pluralism. We all agree with those, right? For the most part, as much as we all agree on one thing. We come to this place with shared values, but that doesn't mean that we don't make mistakes. The work of being together in community is messy and has conflict, but it's how we move towards each other after that matters. We bring our full selves to this place, and love is allowing others to be who they are, as Reverend Angel Kyoto Williams said, but it's also about practicing accountability. 
This is the second part of our monthly theme for January. Our theme is liberating love, the practice of accountability. This means leaning into conflict as a source of transformation, not anxiety. This means often interrupting each other or providing feedback that might be kind of hard to hear in the source of ever widening our circle of welcome and in the source of dismantling how internalized oppressions show up. <clears throat> so last October, I gave a sermon about legacies. And in this sermon, I talked about researching my own ancestry and what I had found regarding my ancestors' participation in the enslavement of people of color. After the first service, a visitor who identified as white approached me and asked if I would be open to feedback. Now, typically right after a service, I am not open to feedback. <laughs> Just to let you all know in case you have a running list so far, I normally tell people to email me because also if you have feedback for me, I would like to actually have time to meet with you and have a conversation about it and use it as an opportunity for transformation. So something about this interaction with this visitor made me say, sure. And then she proceeded to tell me the ways that my sermon perpetuated harm. <clears throat> the ways that I didn't move with care when discussing such harmful subjects, and the ways that it perpetuated my own privilege. It was really hard to hear. I then went and met with Reverend Jack to ask his opinion. He provided me feedback of some areas in the sermon where I was trying to make a joke, but it came off a bit more flippant. I proceeded to change the second service and move through those areas with a bit more care. You all know over the past six months, as you've gotten to know me, that I use humor a lot in my sermons. But I want you to know that I never want to come off as flippant or condescending. I want my words to have care, and sometimes I miss the mark, and that day I did. After the service, I then reached out to several of my friends who are also colleagues to ask them to read over the sermon because I was still so bothered that this person had come up and given me this very strongly worded feedback. I was bothered that I had gotten it so wrong and that I had caused harm. One of my friends said, it's just one person, don't worry about it. And sometimes we want that friend who just validates us, right? <laughs> and tells us, you're fine. It's not a big deal, but even though the intent of my sermon was not to cause harm or perpetuate my white privilege, I still did. This is why the impact of our actions matter. We can still cause harm even when we don't mean to. I have a dear friend whose work is in anti-racism work, specifically with having these conversations with white folks, who I also asked to review the sermon. We had a follow-up conversation where she began by saying, First, I want to say how brave it was of this person to come up to you and offer you that feedback and that she must have thought that you could handle it. And I thought, well, that was a very generous way to frame this person <laughs> that my mind did not go to. And she was totally right. My friend then proceeded to go through the sermon with me and tell me all of the places where it didn't flow well, where I didn't handle things with care, where my privilege was showing up. She gave me very hard feedback and it has changed my sermon since. I did have her read this one too yesterday. <laughs> Thankful for friends that hold us into accountability. And I want to name that she is white and that we cannot ask our friends with marginalized identities to do the emotional labor to educate us. It is up to those with similar identities to help hold each other accountable and do our own education. So this is liberating love, practicing accountability in action. Accountability in action is to have hard conversations with each other about areas where we could have done better and to do better in the future. And this calling into relationship is a gift that we can give each other, not in a shame-based way or in a way that we are seeking perfection, 
but in a way that acknowledges that we are all going to make mistakes. But as Reverend Jen Crow says, let's make better mistakes together. So some of you have witnessed me in meetings calling in and correcting outdated language that might be used. I try to do this in a gentle manner, and I'm aware this is more direct than is typical for Minnesota culture. But part of why I do this is to model what calling into relationship looks like, to model what doing the work together looks like, so that we can all exercise these muscles together. And also to model that it doesn't have to be a big deal. We can acknowledge the word choice wasn't appropriate and move on from there. Make mistake, make better mistakes together. And that's not to say that any one person has all the right answers, but we are doing this work together. We are covenanting together to work towards liberation, to work towards a more just and equitable world, to work towards deepening relationships that allow us to give each other feedback without taking it personally. It's really hard work. And together we try to find the way to move in the world that affirms humanity, that puts love at the core, that works to dismantle all of our internalized oppressions. And sometimes the way forward is not always that clear. Another story for you. During the month of December, we asked a group of hardy volunteers to decorate the sanctuary and the building a bit more for the holidays. As you witnessed, they did a wonderful job of bringing a little festive cheer into this building. The same week that they were decorating, I saw a post on Facebook from a Jewish UU colleague asking people not to use holiday gnomes. This post detailed that neo-Nazis are referring to Jewish people as gnomes on TikTok, and that historically the two had been linked since the Middle Ages. And I'm someone who tries to listen to the voices on the margins and lift up those requests, recognizing that one person doesn't speak for an entire marginalized group, but try to honor requests. So I sent this information on to the decorating team who then pulled the gnomes. Through discussion with Reverend Jack, and we were trying to do more Google searching on it, he reached out to a rabbi friend of his who did some inquiry within his rabbinical community who said, this isn't a thing. <laughs> he had never heard of this. Therefore, we had two conflicting reports on how to proceed. We as a staff sat with this. We sat with our own perfectionism that wanted us to do things right and made the decision to not use the gnomes. The work of liberating love and practicing accountability is willing to be wrong, it's willing, it's about curiosity, it's about willing to make better mistakes, about giving and receiving feedback, and recognizing that we are all bound up together in an inescapable network of mutuality, as the reading from Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said earlier. This work asks us to lean into our fear of conflict, if that's present, or fear of doing things the most perfect way, our fears of wanting to be seen as good activists, Sometimes the holiest work we can do is say, I was wrong and I'm sorry. But sometimes we get caught up in wanting to be right, wanting to be understood, and we miss an opportunity for connection. Because in the end, what matters is that we value each other's humanity, is that we see love at the core of it all and treat each other as such. Another quote from Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He said, some years ago, a famous novelist died. Among his papers was found a list of suggested plots for future stories, the most prominently underscored being this one. Here's the plot. A widely separated family inherits a house in which they have to live together. He continues, this is the great new problem of mankind. We have inherited a large house, a great world house, in which we have to live together, black and white, Easterner and Westerner, Gentile and Jew, Catholic and Protestant, Muslim and Hindu, a family unduly separated in ideas, culture, and interest, who, because we can never again live apart, must learn somehow 
to live with each other in peace, end quote. Being able to see and respect being able to see and respect each other's humanity while all working towards a common goal is the task of our covenantal community. We may not always get it right. In fact, we will not always get it right. But the more that we are able to see conflict as a source of transformation, this affirms the divine in each other. This is making space in the community that we create here. This makes an impact on the world. And we don't do this alone. We do this with this congregation with this faith starting tomorrow side with love is doing that is part of the unitarian universalist association is doing a 30 days of love campaign the theme this year is imagining an interdependent future they write our annual month of spiritual nourishment political grounding and shared practices of faith and justice will begin this monday with information published each monday they say, this year's 30 days of love is a gift to our whole community, a love letter, a warm hug, a spiritual balm for all of the individuals, families, religious professionals, partners, and communities that embody our values and work for justice and liberation year round. Each week will feature a spiritual theme overlapping with one of Side with Love's intersectional justice priorities and will share an array of offerings to help nourish your spirit and give gratitude and affirmation. So I encourage you all to go to Side with Love's website to sign up for this campaign, including families, because they are releasing Time for All Ages each week for families as well. So in a moment, the children and youth are going to come back in and bring their belief boxes that they have been working on, these boxes that are carrying the things that they believe that they hold to be true. And as they come in, I invite you to think about what is in your belief box and what has changed over the years. And if there is room to continue to let go of some of the things that no longer serve you, you can come on down. To make room for new information, for new re relationships, for new ways of being. Through these holy relationships in this place, we are respecting the belief boxes that we all carry especially when people come from different backgrounds. Look at all these belief boxes. I love them, thank you all. Reverend Angel Kyoto Williams says that love is allowing others to be who they are. We let love guide us as the hymn goes through the hard night, because the truth is that together we will make mistakes, but we will strive to make better mistakes. We will strive to name our mistakes and do better in the future. This is not a pithy love that I'm speaking of. It is a liberating love, asking us to be accountable to each other, asking us to recognize that we are not alone. This is your invitation to stay in this week, to notice how and when accountability shows up in your life and, and it invites you into a newer and deeper love of humanity. We are all bound up together. Take good care of yourselves and each other this week, dear ones, and remember that truth deep inside you that you are not alone. You are beloved and you are held in this community by love. Amen? Amen. Thank you. Please rise in body or spirit for our closing hymn, Love Will Guide Us, number 131 in the gray hymnal, and remain risen for our benediction.
Love will guide us through the heart night. Will you place your hands on your hearts again? Do you feel that spark of the divine in there, that spark of love that is guiding you, that guided you to this space this morning, that guided you online this morning? May you continue to listen to it. May you continue to remember that you are not alone and you are beloved. Please turn to your neighbor and tell them you are not alone and you are beloved. <laughs> now turn to your other neighbor and tell them. And join us in the social hall for coffee hour.